ihr wart schon weg. Du bist Hammer, wie du dich bewegst in dem Outfit. Hammer, einzigartig, unglaublich. Hammer, du weißt, dass du Hallo alle. Today we're going to be revisiting the Konjunktiv 2, the subjunctive 2. So we'll call this Konjunktiv 2, 2.0. So 2.0, Konjunktiv 2, subjunctive 2. And uh, you guys all know the Konjunktiv 2 from Würden plus Infinitiv and Hätten, right? So would have, and then would, and then you combine that with any verb. But today we're going to be expanding the way that we use Konjunktiv 2 just to talk about more things. So we're going to be talking about wishes and dreams, Wünsche und Träume, wishes and dreams. Or we can also discuss or use the Konjunktiv 2 for advice, giving advice, or we can use it for politeness, or we could use it for, generally speaking, unreal circumstances, so expressing irreality, if that is, expre expressing the hypothetical, we'll put it that way. So the coin tube spy can be used to, uh, for all these purposes. So let's start with the wishes and dreams. How could you use it for that? Well, we've already seen this a little bit, right? So you could say, talk about what you would like to have. Ich hätte so gern einen Dackel. You might remember from the previous episode where we talked about this. Das ist ein Dackel. Du, 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 du. Ich hätte so gern einen Dackel. Or ich hätte so gern ein Haus in Hawaii. Or ich hätte so gern ein großes Auto. Oder ein Elektroauto, Stromauto, something like that, whatever you would like to have. Or you could talk about Würdest du nicht gern jeden Tag Kuchen essen? So would, would you not like to eat cake every day? Right, so in this, in all these circumstances, or in these examples, we're talking about just wishes and dreams, and this is this should be review, right? Because you know how to conjugate hätten, so from haben, would have, hätte, and you know how to combine würden plus infinitiv. So I'm just assuming that that's um, what you have already, and you can always watch the previous video about the cognitive zwei to get that more under control for yourself, but. Let's talk about advice. Advice, Ratschläge. So to talk about advice with the Konjunktiv 2, we need to do some work with modal verbs. And so let's talk about what they look like in the Konjunktiv 2. So we have, and this is just infinitive, right? Können, müssen, this is just a review of the infinitive of modal verbs, dürfen, Sollen, wollen, that dürfen is a little janky, but that's okay. So können, müssen, dürfen, sollen, wollen, etc. Just the infinitives, right? So let's put those into the Konjunktiv 2 and see if you can get the pattern here. It's pretty easy. Könnten, müssten, dürften sollten and wollten. So of course those infinitive modal verbs with an umlaut retain their umlauts. Those without the umlaut do not take an umlaut. But all of them have in common, what is it? You add a T. And so that transforms can into could, must into Oh boy, what would that be? 
let's just say, would have to, dürfen would be transformed in would be allowed to. This is really awkward. Sollen would uh, would be should, and wollen would be would want to. I think that's right. Like I said, not an English teacher, a German teacher, but you get the idea. So we can use these to have some examples of advice we could give. So, or just general statements about what would be what would be good, right? So man sollte jeden Tag viel Gemüse essen. So one should eat lots of vegetables every day. That's an advice. Now the difference here with sollen and sollten is that this sollte, oops, sollte is like should, whereas, and this is just in parentheses, sollen, the infinitive, is really to be supposed to. So you wouldn't want to say, at least in most cases, you wouldn't want to say one is supposed to eat lots of vegetables every day. I mean, it's true, right? But usually you would say, if you're giving advice, one should eat lots of vegetables every day. So just make sure you know the difference between sollen and then sollten. Much more often uh, than not, people use sollten. Let's take another example. Let's pretend we're talking about if I lived in Vienna. Wenn ich in Wien leben würde, müsste ich immer Sache Torte essen. The Sache Torte is a Vienna specialty chocolate cake, by the way. Okay, so this isn't exactly advice, but it's practice with the modal verbs in Konjunktiv 2. So what that what's that saying is that if I whoops if I live in Vienna or if I would live in Vienna, I would have to always eat Sache Torte. Does that make sense? So let's uh, go on to the politeness, and we don't really have to do this for very long either, because I think a lot of you have some experience with this, using Cointibes 5 for politeness. So in German 111, we already do this. Möchtest du einen Kaffee? That is chapter 2, Kapitel 2, <laughs> in Berliner Platz Neu 1. Möchtest du einen Kaffee? Would you like a coffee? So, right at the beginning of your German experience, you learned how to use the Konjunktiv 2 for politeness. And what's the infinitive of möchtest? It's mögen. Da da da. So, in any event, this is not totally new, or you could ask Hättest du Zeit für mich? Would you have time for me? And this is very polite. Oder zum Beispiel Mein neuer Freund ist weg Ghana, könntest du mir Rat geben? So, my new boyfriend is a vegan. Could you, could you give me advice, right? Rat. Say you're talking to a vegan friend or something. Anyway, this könntest is more polite than saying kannst du mir Rat geben. Although both can be said, könntest du is just simply better. 
especially in circumstances where you don't know somebody that well. Is this making sense? Like I said before, this really shouldn't be totally new. So let's talk about the last uh, way that you can use Konjunktiv 2, the subjunctive 2, which is hypothetical situations. or irrealities, however you want to describe them. So things that aren't real in this moment. So for example, wenn ich Millionär wäre, würde ich ein Haus in Hawaii kaufen. So, of course, this is a very, very hypothetical situation. I'm certainly not a millionaire. So, what we do is we use wenn, right? Typically, when we're saying if, and then the hypothetical situation follows, right? So, if I were a millionaire, I would buy a house in Hawaii. You bet I would. Or another hypothetical situation wenn mein Freund Dackel mögen würde, hätten wir schon einen. So what does this mean? Maybe you can translate. So if my boyfriend would like dachshunds, we would already have one, right? And we could revise that sentence actually to use one of our modal verbs in the following way, in a way that's also very true in my own life. So, wenn mein Freund Dackel mögen würde, könnte ich einen kaufen. Oder könnte ich einen haben. Yeah, I could buy one. <laughs> it's true. But now I can't, weil er die einfach nicht mag. So is this making sense? So in any event, we can use them, the cognitive 2 for hypothetical situations, for politeness, for giving advice, and for wishes and dreams. And that's Konjunktiv 2 2.0. Danke fürs Zusehen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.